Modern batteries are so full of imperfections, and while solid-state technology is very promising but is always far away on the horizon, different manufacturers inventing ways of compensating for those imperfections by combining different battery properties. Today I wanted to talk about hybrid batteries developed by NEO and CATL. In September last year, NEO launched all-new 75 kWh battery pack, which uses hybrid cell technology. This battery pack replaces 70 kWh battery option, which used to use nickel-cobalt-manganese chemistry. I noticed that not many people talk about it, but I think it's quite an interesting innovation in electric vehicle space. The hybrid cell is just a marketing name. There are no actual hybrid cells in this battery. The pack consists of two different lithium-ion battery cell chemistries. One of them is NCM, nickel-cobalt-manganese, and the other one is LFP lithium-ion phosphate. The ratio of NCM-LFP can only be guessed. The purpose of combining the two types is to enhance the overall parameters of the battery. The NMC cells are known for their high energy density. LFP cells are known to their high power density, while they are less expensive. The new hybrid cell battery also has no battery modules and NEO using its new cell-to-pack technology. That simplified and reduces cost and additionally improves energy density. Cell to pack technology is very similar to what BYD uses with its blade battery. The results are pretty interesting as the company is now able to offer 75 kilowatt hour pack at the price which is similar to outgoing 70 kilowatt version. This increases the range of NEO vehicles at least by several percent. NEO standard range hybrid cell battery pack starts as follows. 75 kilowatt hours, about 7% more than previous pack, battery cell chemistry, NCM and LFP, cell to pack technology no modules, simplified manufacturing and assembly, efficiency by 10%, increase volume by 5% and increase energy density by 14%. One may ask why not switch to LFP completely, as it is so much less expensive. Well, the issue is, as I mentioned in one of my previous videos, that energy density would be lower. The other downside of using LFP chemistry is lower capacity and performance in cold weather. Also, it is more difficult to estimate state of charge for LFP-based systems due to the fact that LFP charge curve is much more flatter and it's very difficult to make a judgment based on the voltage measurements. NEO says that it addressed its low temperature issues through the software and hardware solutions. NEO has designed a complete thermal management software and hardware system for the standard range 75 kilowatt hours battery pack. This reduces the range loss and low temperature by 25%. NEO stated that the comprehensive environment shielder applies low temperature conductivity materials and innovative structural design for the source of the heat loss in extremely cold environment. I think this means that they're trying to isolate the LFP part of the battery and prevent the heat loss through to the outside cold temperatures. The intelligent thermal system coupling battery heat generation dynamically adjusts thermal control targets in combination with battery heat to balance the drive experience and energy consumption. The radiant thermal compensation heater uniform heats the battery cells to maintain the working temperature of the battery while taking into account the energy consumption. I think what that means is that basically the batteries get heated until they reach desired temperature. Although as driver accelerates and decelerates, the regenerative braking will start charging batteries and I think this will warm up batteries as well. At the same time, NMC battery cells will have much wider temperature range. So I guess they will probably switch off LFP and do not allow the regen braking to charge LFP cells at cold temperatures to prevent their degradation. The hybrid layout of ternary lithium cells and LFP cells make full use of the low temperature performance advantage of the ternary lithium cells to improve overall battery performance in low temperature. And the dual chemistry control algorithm precisely controls the performance of ternary lithium and LFP cells in cold temperature to improve low temperature efficiency of the whole battery system. The physical properties of the LFP cell make it particularly difficult to accurately estimate the state of charge of the battery. NEO adopts an innovative dual system state of charge estimation methodology. 
First of all the cells in the battery pack are connected in series, where the NCM cells are used as a measurement for state of charge estimation. When the LFP cells are completely drained, the state of charge of the NCM cells is marked as zero for the whole pack. When the LFP cells are fully charged, the state of charge of the NCM cells is marked as 100% for the whole pack. In this way, by measuring the power on MCM cells, the remaining power of the whole battery pack can be accurately estimated. With a state of charge estimation, deviation is significantly reduced from 10 to 3%. It is a common knowledge that NEO uses lithium-ion cells from cattle. Also what's interesting, the cattle recently proposed a hybrid battery pack using lithium-ion and sodium-ion batteries. So perhaps it could be a result of joint partnership between cattle and NEO. It becomes even more interesting innovation if we look at a sodium battery pack or hybrid lithium ion and sodium ion battery pack designed by CAT. The sodium ion batteries are not new. The concept emerged a while ago at the same time as lithium ion batteries, as both types have similar working principles. The low energy density of sodium ion batteries limited interest in this type of cell, but in return as chemistry has its own specific advantages. Cattle was working for a while on this chemistry. Sodium ions are also shuttled between the cathode and anode. However, compared with lithium ions, sodium ions have larger volume and higher requirements regarding structural stability and kinetic properties of the materials. This has become a bottleneck for the industrialization of the sodium ion battery. However, CATL has been dedicated to the research and development of sodium ion battery electrode materials for many years. In terms of cathode materials, CATL has applied Prussian white material with higher specific capacity and redesigned the bulk structure of the material by rearranging the electrons, which solved the worldwide problem of the rapid capacity fading upon material cycling. In terms of anode material, Cattle has developed a hard carbon material that features a unique porous structure, which enables the abundant storage and fast movement of sodium ions, and also an outstanding cycling performance. Why am I holding sheets of paper and piece of wood? I'm hoping they will help me to explain the difference between graphite and hard carbon. So let's start with graphite. Graphite is quite soft and dense. And it's almost like a material that is made of sheets of paper that are quite densely packed together, but at the same time they're like a 2D layers that are not really much connected between each other. So graphite can comfortably store lithium ions that much smaller, but it will struggle storing the larger sodium ion. At the same time, the hard carbon, which is effectively charcoal, is like a wood, which is light but at the same time dense. Crystal lattices of the hard carbon they form 3D structures that are effectively like a piece of wood with many holes in it, so it can comfortably store larger sodium ion. The first generation model is expected to deliver a decent energy density, very fast charging capability, and especially strong performance at low temperatures. Energy density of up to 160 watt hours per kilogram, and the target for the second generation is 200 watt hours per kilogram. Fast charging up to 80% state of charge in 15 minutes in room temperature. Excellent thermal stability, great low temperature performance. At minus 20 degrees C, the sodium ion battery has a capacity retention rate of more than 90%. System integration efficiency can reach up to more than 80%. Cell consists more of 80% of the pack weight and volume. You may ask, why go through all this trouble just to bring up sodium ion to the same level as LFP lithium ion phosphate, which is also inferior to NMC nickel cobalt manganese? Compared to lithium ion phosphate chemistry, the sodium ion does not contain cobalt or nickel, and it is expected to be similarly as affordable, but even cheaper than LFP. Sodium ion chemistry actually beats LFP in low temperature performance, fast charging cycle and system integration efficiency, but currently less energy than. According to Chinese media reports, sodium ion cells could start at $77 per 
per kilowatt hour at a small scale. When the volume production will increase, then it's expected that this will be halved at about 31 to 47 dollars per kilowatt hours, which is potentially much more competitive than current prices of LF NMC. The specifics of sodium ion batteries make them perfect for cold climate. On the other hand, they may be used together with the other type, higher energy dense lithium ion pack or single battery pack. CATL proposes an AB battery system solution, a hybrid battery pack with two battery cell types. In combination with a smart BMS battery management system, the vehicle could take advantage of the low temperature performance of the sodium ion battery or high energy density depending on the need. For example, there would be no limitation on regenerative braking and wind. One of the most important things is that the sodium ion can be produced using the production equipment and processes that are used for lithium ion cells. CATL is starting industrial deployment and by 2023 should achieve a scale of the production. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are interested in EV technology, please have a look at the video over there or perhaps this one over there. And I will see you on the next one.